Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Thank y'all so much for staying with us as we go through our first live show in the last couple of weeks. I want to give a special, special shout out to my brother Lumsy. Lumsy loves the music that we played tonight. We played New Kids on the Block, and he is asking for us to play more New Kids on the Block songs. And so we may just accommodate him. He's a longtime listener, so we appreciate you know him checking in and, and and jr as well jr just said that he wished that we played right stuff and you know he's not a fan of new kids on the block but you know he can't hate because he was feeling right stuff I, I had to debate hanging tough versus right stuff i ended up going with hanging tough because i flipped a coin and they won so you know <laughs> I'm like, I'm as long as it's not the new wannabes one direction then we got rid of it. then, I, I then we're gonna have a problem I, I can dig it i ain't gonna I'm lie I, I i was a fan of new kids on the block when they came out and i had absolutely I no shame with being a fan of new kids on the block you know you know how step on marcus j and, and i like donnie donnie was my favorite i watched blue bloods because he's on there and one of my favorite shows but you know how step on marcus j all right at this time every week we always profile a missing and or exploited child tonight is no different this is a child that we have profiled several times in the past and we are still looking for her shamise chambliss she is a endangered runaway She's been missing since February 1st, 2011. She's missing from right here in Richmond, Virginia. She's a black female, date of birth January 1st, 1997. She's 17 years old. She stands five foot five, 120 pounds. Uh, she's got brown hair, uh, brown eyes, medium complexion, medium length hair. In the photograph we have, she's got red streaks in her hair. She was last seen wearing a gray pea coat, black boots, and black jeans she has a tattoo on her chest and another behind her ear i'm getting this from black and missing inc.com if you have seen chamise chambliss please contact the national center for missing and exploited children contact missingkids.com the richmond virginia local police department or call 1-800 the lost 1-800-843 5678 or hit them up on their website missing kids.com ain't no half stepping with marcus j thank y'all again for listening to us call us at 804-402-2893 lumsey is saying that he was in fact alive in the 80s so now uh, if you was alive in the 80s and you know that there was no place you can go without being uh exposed to some uh some new kids on the block but you know i if you know that's how i played that as the first song you know you got a whole lot more to hear before the night is over JR is saying, L, Mr. LP, One Direction does they thing, though. He, he, oh, no, he, no, he's saying no, One Direction no, does they thing. No, no. Mm -hmm. he's, he's not agreeing with you. How yet. about some Menudo? Let's get that up. Wow. Yes. Yeah. I called it. I called I'm it not out. sure that I can co sign that one with what? you. Menudo? Yeah. Come on, you yeah. a man from up north, man. Come on, you. Everybody wants to say dumb shit and then say, but you up north, yo. You don't get to say dumb well, stuff and Jersey say that City. I'm from up Menudo, north. The right there, some of them, well, there's 50 million of them, but a good many of them huh? are from Jersey City. You do, do you yeah. think that everybody from Oakland was feeling MC Hammer? No. No. Okay. Because they, he wasn't trying to hook up with the drug trade. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Ain't no ass that remarks yet. All right, listen. I'm getting this next article from Think Progress. Uh, from Think Progress and Mr. LP, I want you in on this one first. There are protesters that are demanding answers after a rich man avoids jail time with his seventh, count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sounds like a lot once you count it out, right? DUI, not charge, but conviction. And at the, at the end of last year, Sean Goodman left the bar in Olympia, Washington, and his Ferrari led police on a high-speed chase that approached 100 miles an hour before crashing into two cars, two cars, jumping curbs, and eventually careening into the side of a house. An unsuspecting passenger who had accepted a ride from Goodman was forced to leap from the moving car as it slowed down approaching the intersection. Police arrested Goodman, whose blood alcohol content was twice the legal limit in Washington. He pleaded guilty to felony charges of eluding a police officer and driving under the influence. His seventh DUI conviction. And last week, Judge James Dixon handed down his sentence. No jail time and one year in a work release program. Now, members of the community are obviously crying foul, argue the criminals who have money pay by a different, play by a different set of rules than others who commit similar crimes. 
drawing comparisons to several other recent cases of wealthy defendants getting off with minimal punishment. On Friday, protesters gathered in front of the Thurston County Courthouse to demand answers, saying, quote, the judge has said at some point that he's an important businessman in the community and it wouldn't be fair for him and his employees who would suffer if he went to real jail. And my question is, what about the people that might suffer if he kills somebody? As normal, there's more. I'm going to leave it where it's at and I'm going to get Mr. LP to jump in here actually before we do <laughs> before we do that let me get these comments in so that we don't have to uh go back to them uh jr when you said menudo he said who uh lumsey said ricky martin got no love in new brunswick <laughs> exit nine <laughs> uh which hey, we know <laughs> lumsey got some roots in jersey as well uh joy she's tripping off of me she said come on mj menudo I, hey look i'm not feeling menudo so i think you might your come on might be for j for for, for mr lp uh now jr he's coming back to the actual story uh, Mr. LP, I want you to comment after I read this comment from JR. He's saying it's crazy. Uh, nothing new. You read the latest. Gotcha. A well known member of our community here got arrested for DUI, had it reduced to reckless driving, which is right along the lines of what this story is. Mr. LP, what's your thoughts here, man? I think it's just the whole thing. Affluenza is just a new term for right now because these type of things always happen from the beginning of time. Rich people get off. Um, it's going to be a point where society is going to have to take a further stand and realize who's doing these things and go after them. You need to go after the uh, not only the lawyer, uh, you need to go after the prosecutor for allowing it uh, because they could do more. And then also you need to go after the uh, judge and there's... Uh, positions and things in place so you can go ahead and handle these things to allow it to go on this far and go on is a fault on us as society as a whole right now because we let it happen we let it build up and now because we did not take a, a part too many of us get involved with the general but hardly any of us gets involved with your local and civics you know how many people know when's your next pta meeting or your school board or your judges meetings we don't so there's a level of accountability that we have to do for ourselves in each community, not just yell at the screen. And I'll sum all of that up in one word to help Steven out with all of that he just said. The man knows somebody. Tony? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it's. I think that it's going to probably take him killing someone for them to actually do something. I, I will never understand how these people who have money – get a DUI like don't you can't you afford like a driver a, sh a chauffeur why are you it's driving while you're drunk I don't I don't understand pride, pride nothing that's More ridiculous money. and how does he even still have a license at what point is your license like permanently revoked when you know somebody those things don't happen see the thing is a lot of men like the idea that the paperwork just I, gets lost okay you ladies obviously because you're a higher minded thinking but think about it a lot if a woman sees a guy pulling up in a ferrari versus having a driver in a limo that's nice too but you can pay somebody to drive you but you driving your own ferrari and get in a car that says a lot more to a lot of women young and old and they want that type of status and for even if that's not the case it's a level of pride that is your own that you have control it's a control mechanism to allow somebody else even though i'm paying is to allow somebody else to do it tony asked a good question though if you rich then why are you getting duis like why are you driving you know what i'm saying like that's a fair question and we see this happen enough Lindsay lohan kevin hart but all but see all rich people don't feel like that they need drivers you know the rich people want to drive their own fancy cars you know what i'm saying so right. that's that all part of the high life let me show you what i got basically you may see the older does it say how old this person was again Marcus? It, it doesn't um give me a second to look i might be I able bet to find you it if he was maybe like in his late 50s 60s he would have had a driver but if he's young and got money yeah well i'm looking at the, i'm looking at the photo was. we can look at the photo together and we can all kind of speculate oh, yeah, in his 50s. he's yeah. in his 40s so he's, and 50s. Trying, he's trying to show off his stuff you know so you know he's a man who gets starts getting red from the neck up and you know yeah. and and then just give me the keys bro and if you got money who's gonna tell you no 
Yeah. I ain't had no money week before last. And I told these brothers no, and they gave me my keys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You want to fix that? Well, you want to fix that? Okay. Just, you want to fix that? Just just really quick, ain't no half-stepping with Marcus J. Um, family and friends. Uh, Tony and steve Well, two Wednesdays ago, I went to celebrate with a friend for her birthday before my show. Well... I had one too many, so therefore, I came here, and I was totally unable to do the show. So totally unable to do the show that I spent the whole two hours in the bathroom. And Marcus Shea was so kind enough to fill in for me. I came in here one time, looked at them, got cross-eyed, went back in there. Um, So, yeah, so when I came back, they had taken my keys because they said they were not going to let me drive home. Um, which I really, really appreciated. But by that time, I had think I had thrown up stuff from elementary school. Sorry, excuse me. But um, <laughs> they were really, really upset with me. And like I said, I appreciate them because they were not going to let me drive. But I was really okay. But it, they end up following me home. So um, I appreciated that. And yeah, that's basically the whole story behind. But- that is never okay. Let me just tell you, okay. My, when I was a child, my father, I don't mind sharing this. He Uh-oh. drank too much. He drank too much. And he was coming home one night, storming really bad. I heard this loud crash and the sound of metal hitting something very hard. It was my father hitting a telephone pole. The car was literally wrapped around the pole. He lived. Mm. He lived. Thankfully, he didn't hurt anybody else. It is never, ever, and I know you know this, but that's too recent, let's be. I, need, I thought you were going to say, like, Maybe you called them before you tried. Like oh, we know oh, better at this me, point I in our lives. It. Oh, trust me. We know better at this point in our lives than to even risk it. Like t- my my thing is, if you even gotta think about it, then you know. Then you don't need to be driving. Big and you know your limits. And I appreciate this. And call talk, me. And I feel like call I'm me. gonna take this so I can help help somebody else. But let me just say, as I saw the anger across Marcus J's face because. He is the type of caring person that he is, and everybody who knows him knows. I looked at him, and I said, are you mad at me? And he said, I'm annoyed. And I said, are you really? And I was like, why? He was like, do you really want to know? I was like, yes. He said, because you had a responsibility, and you got like that, and you shouldn't have. You shouldn't have drove, driven, and now you're here. And I was like, okay. I felt like crying, but I understood, and again, I appreciate it. So, again, just... I never drive. I, I don't want to make. I don't. I don't want to make this about us piling on. No, 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 no. I, I'm not. No, I, I don't. I don't want. I don't. Wanna, I, don't I don't want to pile on. Let's be on this one because. No, I need that. We, yes, no, she no, does. No, that's not no, okay. No, 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 no. We don't want to say that. Let me. Let me. Let me say this. We're not gonna pile on her because we had the conversation that night, and everybody understands each other, and it's over. No, I just want to say that, uh, that, that I'm very proud of you, and I appreciate. You. <laughs> no, oh, at the beginning of this, you was gonna say I'm very disappointed. No, you actually, no, but no, because no, I, because for real. I, because it, to put it this way, we know each other well enough to know that I don't need to say that to you. Right, and, and like I said, and not to even get off topic of subject, but that was the thing, and I have, I feel like I do have to share that, whether it be laughing or serious, because they cared enough, and that, like you said, is never okay, because not only could I have hurt myself, I could have hurt somebody else, you know, or both. So, again, getting back to the article. You understand, story, yeah. you, you I mean, we understand where you're coming from. We, we're not going to pile on. Uh, J, J, JR is saying that uh, <laughs> he don't want to rant. Uh, but he's saying that money uh, and polit- politicians leave you on top, and that's why they still drive. And look at Justin Bieber. Why is he not deported? The answer is money. Um, and ultimately, these people have the means. Like the Texas kid, the teenager, a couple of months ago that we talked about right here on this show, that he was underage, he was drunk. And he flipped his pickup truck and killed a bunch of people. And they said that he wasn't going to jail because he didn't understand what he had done because he's too rich to know better. You know, and then we had the blonde, the pretty blonde with the classic blue eyes and fair skin that couldn't go to jail after having sex with 14 year old boys. And they said that she couldn't go to jail because she was too pretty. They literally said that she was too pretty. 
Um, and so I get that a lot. I, <laughs> and, but and, and let me just say this really quick too. And I say, you know, how many really females get like out of tickets? You know, if from a cop or you know whatever, if you got on the right top, showing the right assets, you know, trust me, most females can get out of tickets if a male cop. So I mean, and then you wonder. How the hell, and you know your friend and getting many, many speeding tickets or many times pulled over and got let go. You know, what are you doing for them? Right. But I'm just saying. Ain't no Tell house. Them about who you know. Sorry. Ain't no house to have a market. Hey, hey, that shit don't work for me. Or you, get you know why it don't work for you? You know why it don't work for me? It's not that I'm not. It's, it's not that we're not attractive, Steven. You know what I mean? It's, it, you know, at least not in my case because. I, I'm I'm pretty fly. At least that's what the guy in the mirror tells me. But you know, I, I'm kind of an asshole. Like I'm like, why you pull me over? I wasn't speeding. You know what I mean? Whereas they be like batting the eyes, like excuse See, me. I, I just I, I just try to I, <laughs> putting them double D's in his face. Like, look, man. Yeah, look. <laughs> I, I the kindness. I get it. It's the kindness. I, I am. With what the kindness or I I use what they have. Because like they love for you to recognize their stripes if you know the bar. No, I don't care about this. So I that's why I get a ticket because no, I don't no, care no, about no, that. No, I ain't no, boosting your ego. No, but it's like, sir, I thank you very kindly for your time. You know, oh, you're a captain. What Man, you thanking him for his time for? He wasting yours. No, no, but hear me out. But you know, it's like, I appreciate your time. You know, you're giving me take. I mean, you're a captain. You worked hard for those bars. Man, okay? and, but you know, once you start doing that, he's like, okay, you recognize the importance of my level. Thank you. Man, and I'll let you go. That's why my ass get tips. No, he's like, I hate the, the, that's a, a I kissers. Uh, that's what I was going to tell Tony. I told Tony, I'd be like, I'm a comedian. You think that was funny? <laughs> <laughs> I told him that. To get that but track. I got out of the ticket. They had to get But me. you did for saying thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> I try, I try your shoes, sir. I shine your shoes, yeah, sir. Yeah, the boss. <laughs> where is you get the gun, boss. Where, where you want me to sign this, boss? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say nothing. To you. Oh my God! Hey, look, hey, you stuck, right? Yeah, they I'm got very you. stuck they, on they that. They one. got yeah, you. I stole the card on the blackboard. They got you. That's what they. Hey, look, man. If, if you walk away, ultimately, don't don't take my method. My, my method <laughs> and have your ass on the side of the road. It's I, hey, look, it's never happened to me. It's, ne- it's never, it's never happened to me, you know. But with my, boy, if I take your attitude with my boy, yo, will you put me off? For? Nah, because you know I'm always respectful. I mean, the, the, the last time I'll be, all right, all right, all right, I'll tell the story. Listen, can I tell the story? Can I tell? Can I, can I tell the story from the? Play? We won't say where we was coming from because they ain't paying us. But we left the green room a few months ago. And uh, I was driving, and Lisa was behind me, and I got pulled over. Oh. You remember that story? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember you. Jay. You remember yeah. the story? Yeah. All right, I get, I get pulled over, and, and listen, my sister, ride or die, she pulled up. Yeah. And she called me, you all right? I said, I'm about to talk to him. I can't talk to you right now. I was like, I'm pulling over. <laughs> I'm pulling over. It was like a Jay-Z, Beyonce, but in a brother. So it was like a salon Jay-Z kind of, <laughs> not really. But you know, no, not that kind of way. No. <laughs> back like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, she had my back. And, you know, he was like, you know why I pulled you over? I was like, nah. Oh, actually, yeah. I said, I forgot to put my lights on. He said, yeah, you been drinking? I said, yeah. He said, where you going? I said, home. He said, where you been? I said, you saw me come from out the bar, right? Because you've been watching me, right? <laughs> you know, probably shouldn't have said that. But, I mean, you know, I, I'm not the dude that's going to be scared of the cop. I called Grizzy. I said, Grizzy. We done got pulled over. Marcus uh, going to jail. Hey, but talk to Grizzly the guy who's said, been pulled, need to turn around. not pulled, but stop by. Marcus you know, going to jail all the time. I just, for a long time. I just like, wasn't. You know. I just wasn't. I'm not interested in boosting your ego by allowing you to put me through the bullshit. But you ask me because people be wanting to lie. You've been drinking. Uh, <laughs> No, like I'm not that dude. Yeah, I was drinking, and I'm going home. I'm going. I'm going home because I've been drinking. Okay, can we? Can we? Can 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 you go ahead and do what you're going to do, so I can go about my business, and you can go harass somebody else. Ain't no have to step on Marcus yet. All right, listen, Tony. I want you in on this next one first. This one is about the Florida couple. I'm also getting this from Think Progress. I've been using them a lot uh, lately. There's a couple in Think Progress uh, uh, that I'm getting the story on Think Progress. In Daytona Beach, Chico and Debbie Jimenez, a husband and wife team, they ain't been handing out food in Florida heat every Wednesday because of a court order that says they cannot do so. 
They were feeding the homeless regularly every Wednesday. They fed more than 100 people a hearty lunch, dishes of chicken patties, macaroni salad, fresh vegetables, all that kind of stuff. The meals entirely funded by private donations and staff with violations uh, with vi by by volunteers. I'm sorry. Uh, however, Daytona Beach is one of a handful of cities that enacted ordinances barring individuals from serving food in public. We talked about a story similar to this a couple of months ago, where there was a food truck that uh, had been you know fined from doing this because they didn't have a license I wanted to bring this story up because I think that it's a little bit different one is in a certain is in a different jurisdiction that was in a different state this is in Florida one and two these individuals these regular folk that are feeding homeless people and I just want to talk about it they're getting in trouble for feeding homeless people how you feel about that the first thing that comes to my mind is some sort of liability. Um, you know, if these people get sick or I, I don't know, I guess because of what I do in my regular job, that's always my first thought is, okay, how can somebody try to turn this around? How could this go wrong? How could this go bad? And who could they blame? So that's my thought is maybe it just, you know, if these people get sick, they're homeless, they don't have health insurance, most likely. So they're going to end up in the hospitals or the doctors and the county is going to have to pay for it. Um, and it becomes more of a burden on the government. That's my thought. Okay, being working in the food, there's a lot of litigious uh, lawsuits out there, unfortunately. And in this situation, you see people who hold on to food, for example, but they may have a little bit of the food, they eat it, snacking foods out there open so food what happens when you're giving there's a lot of places and not just there but everywhere stopping churches from going out and feeding people or, or even now you can't even just take people from the street and feed unless you have some type of license or some certification to feed the homeless i think i agree with you and but uh, at the same time i guess just me and my heart it's like okay when we're going to start there's the law and then there's common sense when are we going to start using common sense and some of these things like either we're going to help people or not but that's just basically what it is and and right as we speak of being the, one of the richest countries you know we shouldn't have anybody any especially right there on pennsylvania avenue in washington dc there should be no homeless not even there but anywhere so again when you all say the liability you're right getting sick and then you have to go to the hospitals and the free clinics and get you know treated for free and things like that versus i guess not even the homeless people are feeling comfortable enough to go to the shelters where you know they can get a meal that's already paid by the government and go back out in the streets unfortunately but right of course right and, and that's the thing but they're relying for them just to, enough to keep open and get still get money you know Cause you you now in some DC and some most of those shows you got to get it you got to go there early to get a ticket to come back and hopefully get in line early enough to get and after a couple of hundred people or if that many you have to leave and you can't use that ticket again so you have to come back the next day and well and for food again and I just thought of something that it may have an impact on the amount of funding that different jurisdictions get. Because if they have, say, 50,000 homeless right. people and 40,000 of those homeless people are getting regular meals from these private organizations, then, you know, when the government starts handing out the money, grants and things like that to help but, with those types of... But I'd rather do that. It, but see, it creates a cycle if you don't it even work. We got to this point because we stopped caring. No, I'm not saying that it's right. Oh, I'm oh, just I'm saying, saying that's... Saying. that. I'm thinking maybe part of the motivation, one, the liability aspect, but two, you know, you guys are affecting our numbers. So if we have people that are getting this food, then we're not going to get as much funding to be able to help people but it is always, overall. But they worrying about, in the end, they worrying about their pockets. Right. And that's what I was getting ready to say, yeah. because it's not like that they're going to go to you and say, Tony, well, if you want to donate me your stuff, then right. you can come in on this. No, because basically it's probably a self-owned business that they're getting funded for. So. Yeah, you're taking money out of my pockets for the amount of money that I can get to house as money as I can, 100 but, And that's tax deductible, but, too. And, but, right. To a point. And then in a lot of situations and in several jurisdictions, you can't take it. So it's like you're just giving it. Think of how much better we could be as a nation if we weren't sued or if there, if there was a little bit more protection to help the next person. About, you know, you can get arrested in some, if a homeless person is laying in a park. You come up there, are you checking on him? And let's say you go back to give a blanket or whatever. 
and you can get a, a ticket. That happens almost every day in a lot of places, and that's sad. I agree. You know, have stepping with Marcus J. A um, couple more I want to get to um, because this one right here, I, I I could I could get on that. You know all day i get upset when i even hear about this story um mr lp you said something that i say all the time we got laws but we also are in some cases void of common sense i mean our laws say that there's certain things that we shouldn't do uh, and if we do them you know then we're in trouble like when we did the replay last week Carl Banks and I got into a debate and you were here on that show when we talked about, um, you know, if you had a child that was injured and you ran inside a store to get some supplies to help the injured child and you just happen to steal them off of the shelf to help a child that's bleeding outside, you are now subject to a theft charge. Even though you're helping a child that's bleeding outside, you know what I mean? And and we debated that. We don't need to get back into that debate. Carlton's not here even really to talk about it. But the point I'm bringing up is there's times when there's common sense and then there's time when there's law. And there's time where you got to say, kiss my ass law. Let's go with this common sense. And and this is one of those situations. If you got people that are genuinely in need and you got people who are genuinely benevolent, who are looking to help them, you know, regularly then what's the problem legacy in that radio in a partnership with love revolution has done that we've been out tony you've been there with us we went out and 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 fed homeless people you know so are we now subject to these sort of ordinances right here in the richmond virginia area can we all be giving tickets and fines and all that kind of stuff because we wanted to help people i mean that's just crazy it's so crazy to me that it really kills my mood i brought up the story because i wanted to talk about it but it really does kill my mood when i hear about these people getting in trouble for trying to be benevolent but let me ask you this instead of trying to raise money for fines and tickets okay just using this situation this area and you can use plenty of examples build more buildings for the homeless and things like that because like you said there should never be anything but we got overpriced apartments down on sims and down on broad street behind comfort and they building that no one can afford in this area but so why not build small one room dormitories like you do in colleges work out plans uh you can get everybody in it's on the bus line so you don't have to worry about it. You got these situations where you got homeless people in countries and all these other, in, in, in the county and stuff where there's no um, way of transportation. So what are these people supposed to do? And at least, now granted, not that there's much here on the bus line, but at least it's a start. And make it more convenient. Get the resources. If you spend more money that way versus paying officers to arrest you for some other things, Twisted mounting and thinking. Uh, what is the word uh, where you, uh, and I can't think of it, where you, you're circulating a, uh, a resource in a different direction, reallocating? Um, the, it's, it's not the word, but it's one of those things. You doing that, then now you got something else better for yourself, and you're going forward. You know, I have to have on Marcus J. This next one I know is going to get. The folks in social media riled up along with the folks here in the studio. Call us at 804-4022-893. That's the number to dial to be a part of the discussion. I'm getting this one from Uh, (laughs) news1.com. I want the ladies in on this one first. Uh, Which one of y'all want? Which one of y'all want this one first? Uh, Tony, you want this one first? Judging by the look on your face and the fact that Liz is pointing at you, we gonna get you in on this one first. I this is uh, you know I always like to read the headline before I get to the story. Woman files lawsuit over unreasonable sex toys law. Yeah, before anyone in Silver Springs, Georgia can buy a sex toy, he or she must have a legitimate doctor's prescription or scientific reason. The sex ordinance has gotten resident Melissa Davenport, and she's pictured, so let me see if I can find her picture. Okay, it says that her picture's here, but she her picture's not here. Thankfully, we can't see what she looks like, but she's up in arms. She filed a lawsuit over the town saying that it's, quote, an invasion of privacy. She feels the government should not get in between her and her sex toy. No, that's <laughs> Some people have this dirty mind about how people are going to use it. People really do need devices because they need it for health reasons and to have a healthy, intimate life with their spouse. 
She says she suffers from multiple sclerosis, uh, which is a chronic degenerative disease of the nervous system. The nerve pathways interfere with going to my intimate areas to the point where I had no feeling. Uh, Davenport says that the sex toys have helped her save her marriage. Her lawyer feels the ordinance is ridiculous, saying, quote, the ordinance basically says the government can stick his nose in his bedroom. <laughs> The way that they word in this article, I'm sorry, I'm just being a little immature here, which I do that sometimes, but you can stick their nose in their bedroom and say you can use this, but not that. He also argues the ordinance violates the 14th Amendment. People have the right to decide for themselves whether these devices help their intimate life, and the government has no business being in the bedroom and second-guessing their decision. She's not seeking any monetary gains. She only seeks to have the ordinance deemed unconstitutional. The city of Silver Springs told the Atlanta Journal-Constitution they cannot comment on the hot-button sex toy issue but expect to respond to the lawsuit by June. Translation, they are banning vibrators, y'all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What you got to say about that, Tony? They are banning vibrators. You can't have a hey, look. You can't have a rabbit. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, let me. Let me no dolphin. There, there are there are laws on the books in several uh, jurisdictions where they ban the certain length of certain apparatuses. Oh, good grief! Here we go. Can, can we get the ladies' man? I just wanted to toss that. that, would be, that it, was a, it was an educated but if, point. But, but what if? Okay, there was an education hey, look, because I was about to battle with you, but we there was an education point. To no, that. I know, I, I know it was, and I was about to fight with you I on it. But so many directions. That's why I was oh. about to, yeah, I was about to take him in. So a foot this way, six inches know, that way. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. That's absolutely. <laughs> that that's absolutely too much into people's um, bedrooms, you know. To, my thought is first of all sexual desire is a norman normal human <laughs> normal human tra i mean it's 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 animalistic as animals like we have that desire and that's what we were made for um and to tell people like you can't use certain things in your bedroom unless you have like it's not like viagra I mean, I can understand something like that where you need, you know, to be clear by a doctor because it could have certain physical, you know, um, ramifications. But my thought is if you that's the safest way to do it is with yourself or or yeah. your consenting partner. I mean, it's not like they're doing it with animals because we know that's illegal. Bestiality. Thankfully, yeah, bestiality, you know, they're not. That's hot. <laughs> I mean, I, I just think it's a better way to control your desires. Time. We all Appreciate know some that. people that I, I know we all know some people who would be much <laughs> nicer and more. What you say? You said bestiality, and then she said we all know some people. I checked right out when those two lands <laughs> went together. <laughs> no, I was gonna say. I, I was trying to let it alone. I was just gonna say. I think we all know some people who would be happier and more at peace and more satisfied with life itself if they was getting <laughs> yeah. regular exactly yeah well well wait a minute because first thing i was going to ask is what is the population in this city or town where they are because i was going into the whole reproductive thought as well because if like you say women we can just have it by ourselves versus if they want their town city to grow mm -hmm. then you need to reproduce so therefore they can still be on the map as a town or a city Absolutely. you feel me so if we be like ooh, this dolphin this bullet makes us feel so much better than the next dude then you're right we're not gonna need you so i understand the importance of yeah. we probably can make ourselves so much more happier than the next one but no 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 no, no. we need for you to go ahead and have regular booty duty <laughs> that way not everybody because, has access to booty duty. See, but that's what I'm saying. They want you to get access to it. It's not that easy. What, what, sure well, they want so you. then you have people going out and soliciting prostitutes or male escorts or female escorts. Like to me, that you're, you're like putting up one barricade and you're going to force people to open the door to something worse. How does that open the door for prostitution? For just because if you're telling me I can't. 
have fun with my toys, then I mean, I don't I'm going to need to get it from now, somewhere. I don't. I'm not saying that. Oh, okay. I, I'm just saying, to the extreme, right? I and I think people I would become more reckless if that were the case. You know what I I'm saying? I understand. Okay. You know, that's why I said to me, it's safer that way to be able to be in your own house with your little toys, and you know, maybe your your mate has some sort of physical condition where they can't really participate. But I mean, you need that in a relationship somehow. You need that physical connection. Do you like toys? I'm sorry. Do you like toys? <laughs> 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 pardon. You want to pardon me. Do you like toys? I mean, they in your business. We might as well get. Do you use toys? Do you like toys? I've tried them. This yes. is a Tony exclusive. I've tried exclusive. Them, yes. I've tried them, yes. There are. Um, Stevo, have yeah. you used toys? Um, um, I do like my GI Joe. No, no, no. I said, out. have you used GI Joe? Oh, sexual toys. What the um, hmm. I have uh, I have used them on others. Make, makes GI Joe with the Kung Fu grip <laughs> <laughs> take on a whole new meaning. <laughs> um, the, there were there were there were other devices used. <laughs> the sling back arm action. <laughs> but no, there are other devices that um. I have uh, explored with other people at one point. Okay, so that's a ago. yes, Marcus J. No, uh, I haven't. You okay, well, uh, have the my motor. I would burned out I in my bullet. Okay, mid use, and I yeah, that no. was not. And ever since then, I have not used any toys. Oh. Well, now here, keep extra down, down, down here's down here's a reason. There's a, a town, you gonna tell me why the motor ran out? Well, oh, um, well, I, know, I understand that part, but uh, the. Oh. <laughs> the there was a town in New York, in upstate New York, that banned it because the motor ran out a lot and sh- uh, and shorted a lot of people. And the lady got an electric shock, where now that she got uh, had some problems with it. And then there's a lot of uh, there's a big push in the medical society that they want to ban a certain length and certain uh, width of a vibrator because it's causing abnormal thoughts and. Uh, problems, <laughs> so, so, uh, the abnormal thoughts, and also uh, because it's various sexologists uh, have say, stated is that when they're with their partner, unattainable things. That Man, you, can't get. you know what? This and is then, right there with. I don't mean cut you off, Steve. I'll let you finish your point. But that's right there with the dudes at the prom having impure thoughts. Is bullshit. No, I, I understand. No, but no. This one because now. There are some women. I get frustrated when I hear bullshit, though. But no, but my bullshit meter is going way up no, right now. No, no, that part yes. But there's another side of it that where there are women who are trying to buy abnormal sizes of them, and then they're using them and causing damage to their uh, certain okay, parts of their body. Okay, but that's the risk you take. I I'm sorry, Sad. Sad, I, I Sad is telling me to stop cussing. I get fired up, said. I'm sorry. No, no, I agree Thanks, with Sid. you. I'm not disagreeing. I'm My just saying that in Alabama, hand, there's a big push. To, I think it's a ban on a certain length of things like that in the state of Alabama. But no, this is Steven. all together. Like, One more bullshit, though. Okay, like, I mean, there are some that like you put on your fingertip. Like, what is that doing to anybody? Mm-hmm. That's not going to... Mess oh yeah, up. the one that's like the, you know the lady with the fame as the vibrator. Have you fader. tried? Yeah. Have you tried the bunny rabbit? No. What the, is it called? The bunny tip. <laughs> no, I've not had the bunny tip. I got a name for y'all to Google. Doctor Laura Berman. I don't want to go. Excelsior that. Four. Holla at Doctor Laura Berman. Doctor Laura. She got a whole line of, um, you know, stuff. You got say going on? I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know all that. Black I just Friday. I know that I know that she. Um, I used to listen to her because she used to be on um, the Oprah uh, radio station. Mm-hmm. So I used to listen to her show, and she used to talk about all kinds of all kinds of stuff. Handcuffs. Yeah. Uh, see, now you're going too far. What are you gonna do with a handcuff <laughs> when you by yourself? <laughs> well, no, hey, look, I know. Hey, I'm hey, just asking. So, she said toys in general. Have you? It didn't say it wasn't specified by yourself or with somebody else. I was just asking. It says that I could cuss all I want. Just no more talk of the GI Joe with the Kung Fu grip. <laughs> <laughs> that's what got it that's what raised his ire jr says if you have a problem with it fine have a problem with it but how are you going to tell someone what they can do to themselves i can i can totally exactly. get it of course leave it to jr to bring some levity the back to the conversation make us be grown up shocking that's straight huh? foolishness and you but deserve but to be in JR, if you're listening to me is this you who's supposed to be here it yes. is it is 
Oh, okay. Well, JR, you need to call in, and everybody else who's listening needs to call in to 804-402-2893. Again, JR and everyone else who's listening, call us. Let us know what you think, what you want to talk about, what you want to hear at 804-402-2893. He's not scared. Ain't no half step with Marcus J. (laughs) He said he got black problems. I think he means back problems, but it says black problems. So I'm I'm not sure if that's a typo or not, JR. Let me know. 804-402-2893. Two eight nine three is the number to dial. Be down with the flagship show, Legacy Internet Radio. He, he, and then he typed back and said "black" in all caps, so he meant it right the first time, not a typo. He got black problems. Okay, you know, has Marcus Uh-oh. J. So I, last, he's not getting any of you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you not duck. Uh, I'm not, I'm not and your that. baby mama that dog. So what black problems you have? Yeah, I'd like, I'd like to know. Let us know online or offline, my brother. We would definitely want to know what having black problems is all about. All right, last story I want to get to in this segment. This one is probably the first story that we'll do tonight that's rather serious. And that was by design because I just feel like clowning tonight. I don't want to be do- too serious. But I'm also getting this one from... News1.com. Um, listen, I want you on this one first. It's about a woman with a massive tumor and no health insurance. She got turned away by four different hospitals. Doris Lewis. She had a massive and painful benign abdom- uh, abdominal growth that has now inched its way towards her heart. Desperate, she tried seeking the services of four Atlanta area hospitals and none would help her because she lacked health insurance. 59-year-old woman struggled to secure health insurance benefits after her husband passed away a few years ago when her abdomen began to protrude. She thought it was weight gain at first, but then came to realize the medical assistance would be necessary uh, as the growth accelerated in size. And one day she was in such unbearable pain that she called 911. They took her to Emory Hospital. Uh, it was there she found a doctor who was sympathetic to a situation. He said, you will see a doctor without money. Uh, now she will finally be relieved of a heavy burden on June 10th. And she could not be more grateful. She said, quote, I would feel great now if I can get it out today. Right now it would be a blessing. She's asking for prayer so the social procedures will go well and without a hitch. Now, I, I use this story as a jump off point to discuss how folks in our country who lack medical insurance can be turned away in a way like this. So jump in here, Lisa. I want to get everybody's opinion. I want you in on this one first. I mean, everybody knows, and as everyone sees with the Affordable Care Act, how important insurance is. Um, and like you said, this has been going on for, I guess, a couple of years. So, you know, they probably, for the ones who turned her away, probably wasn't in the realm of accepting her without insurance and especially having a pre-existing issue um, or if she let it go too far for them to want to be liable for her surgery if something didn't happen so um thankfully someone did have the heart to take her in but i feel like it was all again a money issue every time i hear the insurance thing i always go back to the movie john q i mean that is like the perfect movie example for anything to deal with insurance just how you want to treat people whether they have insurance or not it's all about who you know and money once again so um thankfully someone did have the heart to or you know it's going to give her the surgery prayers to her but i feel like the ones who turned her away it was all about not getting paid money mr lp what's your thoughts situations like that sickens me um to the core because I've been in similar situations and others, um, and I've, you know, we've all heard sort of stories of people dying because it was too late. Um, I'm glad for the Affordable Care Act, but the thing about it is still everybody's definition of affordability is still out there. It may be there, and people are now say, "Oh, just sign up for the plan." That doesn't mean you still can afford it. And uh, that's the thing. Everybody's under this misconception that, oh, because you have it now, oh, Obama saved us all. No, it's, it's still not there. And it's sad and it's very sad and we need to do more. Tony, what's your thoughts? The first thing that came to mind for me was the Hippocratic Oath, um, which to me, that is the whole point of practicing medicine is to help people. And while I know that, you know, doctors and nurses, you know, they have to make a living just like we do. 
you know, how often do you see doctors and people in the medical profession, profession, you know, whether they be pharmacists or, you know, any, anybody who has to go to an actual professional program and, you know, receive some sort of certificate or degree um, to practice in the medical field, you know, like struggling financially. And I just think that to me, that's the whole point. Yes, some of them get in, in it for the money, but when you take that Hippocratic Oath, you're supposed to help people. Um, morally, ethically, that's what you're there for. And if you stop doing that because somebody does not have health insurance, you should have your license taken away. I had a doctor who was kicked out of the hospital because he gave me a breathing machine and things like that. He gave one a month to everybody and gave me one. I feel like that that oath applies for back in the day, people. Now things are more expensive, things cost, and now basically everybody, unfortunately, is out for self. Look how many of these doctors do procedures every day who aren't halfway licensed, and you look at, I, and then thinking about the little boy who went through the whole dental experience, getting too much um, anesthesia when he got his teeth pulled and then he passed away. I mean, and a lot of these, you got these malpractice suits who people are still practicing, so a lot of people, I swear, it's just for the money. Like I said, it's, it's good if they would keep to that oath that they're that they're supposed to take in the beginning. But that's where deep we need. Down, how, in, but really? like, think about it. If we I'll see, charge you four hundred fifty dollar copay to give you a chest X ray and some cough medicine. But think what about all the the money for excess. And I mean, there's several plastic surgeries that are needed in fit situations for back and health. I'm not taking away from those. But how much excessive? That's like a, a hundred to one. How many excessive surgeries, all that money could have gone to situations like this and the world would be so much better? No, I can, I can agree. JR's hitting this up. He says his friend lives in Korea, got hit by a vehicle while on his bike, messed up his wrist, pins and all. He paid $60. Uh, as the greatest nation, we can't take care of our own. Uh, Joy says that she uh, have an MS since 1999. It bothers her. She remembers waiting to get approval at one time because she had pre-existing condition. You know, it, it, it upsets me because, I, you know, I won't... It, I won't get too specific into what I do outside of Legacy and that radio, but what I will say is this, I'm familiar with this on a professional level, and I also know that people who have insurance, they can go and get a whole bunch of tests and a whole bunch of treatment that they don't even need because they know the doctors who prescribe these things know that they're going to get paid because the insurance company is going to pay it. Uh, and they do this because they know they're going to get paid one and two they like to compensate for the people who come in who can't get treatment who they can't run up the bill on but they still have to see and when you look at something like the affordable care act that makes an effort to try to alleviate those types of uh, negative practices you got opponents that have issue with it because of the president that you know spearheaded it and it's just you know it's it's unfortunate when you talk about somebody like with your friend jr in another country pays 60 dollars to get treatment on a broken wrist with pins and 60 dollars to get treatment on something like that and in our country you know you know that his insurance even if he had good insurance he would have been spending it you know to use an old phrase he'd have spent a grip on that you know so it's, it's just it's just it saddens me it's not one of those things that we got all the answers to i do like to bring them up to get some dialogue on it to stir the brains of the masses ain't no how stepping markets yeah we're gonna take another break y'all and when we come back we're going to take our final segment into the world of what the hell we haven't talked about Michael Sam. And what's going on with Mitt Romney coming to the defense of President Barack Hussein Obama? We got a lot more to get into. Marcus J. Mr. LP, Tony and the First Lady, we are back in just a few minutes. Ain't no ass stepping with Marcus J. Live from the den, y'all. Stay with us. <laughs> 